Tonight on Global News, senior attacked. A 71-year-old man is charged with sexually assaulting a nursing home patient. Rousing welcome. Solar car racers cross the finish line at the U of C. Busting a myth. Popping echinacea may not avoid a summer cold. And on Global National, the Millennium Bomber gets 22 years, but police are no closer to who was behind his plot. You're watching Global News Calgary with Nirmala Naidu and Tony Tai. Good evening. A 71-year-old employee at a Calgary nursing home has been charged with sexually assaulting a resident under his care. The victim is an 86-year-old woman who suffers from dementia. The attack is alleged to have taken place last Sunday at Wentworth Manor on 14th Avenue Southwest. It was reported to police by staff at the nursing home. Caesar Benjamin Guzman has been charged with one count of sexual assault. Yeah, Guzman worked right. at a personal care attendant at Wentworth Manor for about three years. Louis Kudas joins us now outside Wentworth Manor. Louis, what can you tell us uh, any more about this attack? Well, Tony, all we can tell you is that it literally took place in the middle of the night, about 3.45 a.m. on Sunday morning, apparently in the dementia unit of the Wentworth Manor, which is right behind me here. And while administrators did not have a lot to say about it, they wouldn't go on camera, the people who live here, as well as police, had some very strong comments to make about this, as you say, very disturbing attack. Take a listen to what they have to say. I think that's a terrible thing to do. And, and uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think that could happen here. Any time that we receive a complaint of sexual assault, it's very serious in nature, and it's obviously much more disturbing when it's somebody that's in a vulnerable situation as far as an elderly person in this type of state, in a dementia state. Now, Guzman will appear in provincial court to answer to one charge of sexual assault on, assault on August 26th. He was released. He's on his own right now on the condition that he have nothing to do, no contact with the victim or with the Wentworth Manor. Tony. Thank you, Louis. A Calgary man who trashed the home of his former common-law wife pleaded guilty today to most of the charges against him. Harry Robertson admitted to making threats to cause death housebreaking and property mischief. Now this, is, this was the scene of the crime back in April. Sarah Hall's northeast home was completely destroyed. Nothing could be saved and Hall even lost all of her family photos. She and her two children were not home when it happened and they're still trying to recover. He's cutting his losses. I don't think um, there's a remorseful um, vein in his body. He's not the one that wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning consoling his son or my son. Robertson will remain in custody until he's sentenced in November. A trust fund is set up for Sarah Hall and her family through any Calgary Scotia Bank. Well, the young woman who was raped and left for dead in Banff is being flown home to Ottawa on life support. The 20-year-old is still in a coma. She was found half-naked and badly beaten on a riverbank in Banff two weeks ago. A 25-year-old drifter from Ontario is charged with attempted murder and aggravated sexual assault. Albert Muckle is being held without bail. He will be back in court on August 8th. Alberta drivers are getting another break on insurance rates. The insurance board has ruled premiums will drop by another 4% starting November the 1st. This works out to about $24 on the average policy. The decision follows four days of public hearings in Calgary and Edmonton. Since last October, the province has cut premiums by 11% or about $100 for some drivers. Critics, though, say the cuts are not enough. We've been charged the highest rates for insurance in the entire country. And still, at this point, we are paying 30% higher than, say, British Columbia. So with this current 4% reduction, I can't see how we've achieved anything that resembles parity. Coming up at 5.30, we'll hear from Premier Ralph Klein on this issue, and we'll also talk to frustrated Calgary drivers who don't think these cuts go far enough. Hundreds of family and friends turned out in Edmonton this afternoon for the funeral of a murdered mother. 
Leanna White was 29 years old and four months pregnant with her second child. She never showed up for work at her hospital job two weeks ago. Her SUV was found abandoned and police launched a massive search. Five days later, a volunteer team led by White's husband found her body in a ditch. Michael White is now charged with second-degree murder. The couple's three-year-old daughter, Ashley, was not at today's funeral. She is now in the custody of Leanna's mother. Former Lethbridge Alderman Dar Hetherington is broke. She and her husband, Dave, have declared bankruptcy. They say their finances were drained in her long court fight against mischief charges. Her debt reportedly includes $26,000 in legal fees. Hetherington made international headlines two years ago when she vanished while on a city council trip to Montana. She turned up three days later in Las Vegas claiming she'd been abducted and sexually assaulted. Last year, Hetherington was convicted of writing lurid letters to herself and lying to police about a stalker. She is still under house arrest. An Alberta professor is set to solve a Sasquatch mystery. U of A professor David Coltman is testing a tuft of coarse brown hair found in a forest near Teslin, Yukon. That's where several people heard or saw what they swear was a Sasquatch. Coltman says Sasquatch DNA would be closer to a human or a chimpanzee rather than a bison or bear. Coltman's research has sparked all kinds of media interest. CBS News, the LA Times and others are lining up to interview him. They raced across the continent and today 18 cars powered only by the sun crossed the finish line here in Calgary. <laughs> Top engineering students from Canada and the United States competed in the North American Solar Challenge. Today the University of Michigan crossed the line first. The race started in Austin, Texas almost two weeks ago and the cars traveled 4,000 kilometers. They crossed the border into Montana and then cruised along the Trans-Canada into Calgary. This is the first year the University of Calgary entered a car. It finished in the middle of the pack in 10th place. It was a lot longer than we thought it would be. It was pretty hard. I mean, we had two bad days in the beginning, which cost us, but uh, we managed to make up a lot of time on the way. We'd like to finish on the podium for everybody here, but uh, it looks like we at least made Calgary proud in our first time. The winner of this race, the Michigan team, will now move on to the World Solar Championship in Australia. There's bound to be lots of sunshine there for that one. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Dunphy joins us now with our first look at the forecast. Do we have sunshine, Paul? Yes, we do. And it was a little dicey there this morning. We had a lot of cloud cover, but then right around 8 o'clock, the cloud disappeared. The sun burst forth, and we had a high temperature of 22. Low early this morning of 9. We're currently 21 degrees. Got a southeast surface wind that's fairly light. And, folks, it just gets better from here on. Broad ridge of high pressure building in over the region. That means sunny skies, warm temperatures temperatures for the next little while. We'll tell you how long in just a few minutes. All right, Paul, thanks. The crew of Discovery was doing damage control today. At 515, NASA uses Canadian technology to see if there's any trouble with the shuttle. And then at 522, no cure for the common cold. A new study concludes echinacea doesn't help. And then Makeup Mogul, a Canadian teen, is poised to make Mary Kay history. Those stories are still to come.